Welcome to this annotated anatomy video that's going to outline the branches of the internal pudendal artery and the pudendal nerve. So on the screen at the moment we have the view of the pelvis, a hemisected pelvis, where anteriorly we've got the pubic symphysis, the superior pubic rami, the inferior pubic rami, the ischial tuberosity and the ischial spine and their respective ligaments that run towards the sacrum. So the sacrospinous ligament and the sacrotuberous ligament. So here we have the sacrum and the coccyx. I've also added in here the obturator internus muscle filling the obturator foramen. And I've also depicted the thickening of that obturator internus membrane, the tendinous arch. This is important, if you remember, as it helps to form the attachment sites of the levator ani muscles. I've also added here the outline of the male external genitals. We've got the penis and the scrotum, and here we have the rectum and the anal opening. So in order to appreciate the pathway of the internal pudendal artery and the pudendal nerve, we need to add into this diagram various regions. So first of all, if we can just add these regions, then here in red we can see we have the pelvis. It's sitting above the pelvic diaphragm and it's going to contain the pelvic viscera like the uterus and the bladder. So in red here we have the pelvis. Here in green we have the gluteal region. This is important as we look at the pathway of the pudendal nerve and the internal pudendal artery later on. In light blue here we have the pudendal canal which again we'll come back to. The pudendal canal. In purple, next to the pudendal canal, we have the ischioanal fossa. So the ischioanal fossa, these fat pads that sit either side of the rectum and anus. Moving anteriorly, in orange, we have the deep perineal pouch. And the deep perineal pouch is separated from this grey superficial perineal pouch by the perineal membrane. So here we have the perineal membrane and in grey we have the superficial perineal pouch. Within the superficial perineal pouch I've also added the general orientation of dorsally the corpora cavernosa and more ventrally the corpus spongiosum. So if we now turn to the internal pudendal artery first of all then let's not forget that supplying the pelvis and the perineum the main artery is going to be the internal iliac artery and here we can see the internal iliac artery so the internal iliac artery and coming from it as one of its terminal branches is the internal pudendal artery so the internal pudendal artery the internal pudendal artery supplies the perineum but first of all it has to leave the pelvis and it does this by passing out of the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen and it winds around the sacrospinous ligament and the ischial spine to run a short course within the gluteal region before entering the perineum via the pudendal canal. It passes into the perineum by going through the lesser sciatic foramen. It then runs within the pudendal canal the pudendal canal being a fascial canal formed laterally by the ischiopubic rami and formed medially by the fascia of obturator internus. So here we can see this pudendal canal, this fascial canal, and it's running alongside the ischiopubic rami. The internal pudendal artery, once in this canal, gives off a branch that goes towards the rectum, and this is the inferior rectal artery the inferior rectal artery. It goes from the pudendal canal to the rectum by passing through the ischioanal fossa. Remember these are fat filled spaces that's at either side of the rectum. If we then return to the internal pudendal artery it gives off a perineal branch. This perineal branch goes and supplies some of the musculature of the superficial perineal pouch but most importantly, it gives off the posterior scrotal, or if this was a female, the posterior labial arteries. So here we have the perineal artery, and an important branch from the perineal artery is the posterior scrotal, or labial, if this is a female, artery. 
The internal pudendal artery then passes through the pudendal canal to enter into the deep perineal pouch. So the deep perineal pouch sitting above the perineal membrane. Along its path within the deep perineal pouch, it gives off a couple of branches. The first of all is the bulb. So this is the artery of the bulb of the penis or of the clitoris. And it also gives off a small branch which goes to the external urethral sphincter. As the internal pudendal artery carries on through the deep perineal pouch, it gives off the deep artery of the penis. This deep artery of the penis or the clitoris passes through the perineal membrane and then runs through the middle of each of the corpora cavernosa. So here we can see the deep artery of the penis running through deep artery running through the corpora cavernosa. If this was in the female it would run through the corpora cavernosa of the clitoris. The terminal branch of the internal pudendal artery is the dorsal artery and this passes between the perineal membrane and the pubic symphysis to run along the dorsal surface of the penis where it supplies the skin to some of the surrounding tissue. So here we have the dorsal artery. Again, if this was a female, it would be the dorsal artery of the clitoris. So the internal pudendal artery leaves the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen. It winds around the sacrospinous ligament and ischial spine to run a short course in the gluteal region before entering the perineum via the lesser sciatic foramen. It then runs through the pudendal canal where it gives off the inferior rectal artery and it also gives off a perineal artery which ultimately goes to supply the posterior region of the scrotum or the labia. The internal pudendal artery carries on through the deep perineal pouch where it gives an artery to the bulb of the penis and also an artery to the external urethral sphincter. It also gives off a branch, the deep artery, which runs through the corpora cavernosa and also the dorsal artery of the penis or the clitoris which supplies the dorsal surface and its surrounding structures. This obviously leaves a region here. This is the anterior scrotum. The anterior scrotum is supplied by the external pudendal artery and the external pudendal artery comes from the femoral artery. But I won't add that in this diagram here. If we now turn to the pudendal nerve, the pudendal nerve originates from S2, S3 and S4 sacral rootlets. So here's S2, here's S3 and here's S4. And these three rootlets give off the pudendal nerve and the pudendal nerve runs alongside the internal pudendal artery for a short course within the pelvis before exiting the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen. It loops around the ischial spine and sacrospinous ligament to then run a short course in the gluteal region and enters the perineum via the lesser sciatic foramen. As it runs within the pudendal canal, still alongside the internal pudendal artery, it gives rise to the inferior rectal nerve. This is a somatic nerve, remember, inferior rectal nerve that goes on to supply the external anal sphincter. Within the pudendal canal, the pudendal nerve gives rise to the dorsal nerve and this dorsal nerve courses through the deep perineal pouch alongside the dorsal artery of the penis or the clitoris to then go and supply the skin around the dorsum of the penis. So here we can see the dorsal nerve of the penis in the male or the clitoris within the female. Again within the pudendal canal the pudendal nerve gives off a third branch and this is known as the perineal nerve. So here we have the perineal nerve. This perineal nerve splits into two branches, a deep branch that goes into the deep perineal pouch to supply the external urethral sphincter and associated muscles in the deep perineal pouch. So here's the deep branch and it also has a superficial branch and the superficial branch goes to supply the musculature within the superficial perineal pouch and it also terminates as the posterior scrotal nerve. And here we can see the posterior scrotal nerve supplying the posterior scrotum. In the female, this would be the posterior labial nerve. So posterior scrotal or labial nerve. 
and this is coming from the perineal nerve. So the pudendal nerve coming from S2, S3, S4 leaves the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, enters the perineum via the lesser sciatic foramen and in the pudendal canal it gives rise to the inferior rectal nerve that passes through the ischioanal fossa to the external anal sphincter. It gives off the dorsal nerve which courses through the deep perineal pouch to then innervate the dorsum of the penis or the clitoris and the perineal nerve which has a deep branch to supply the structures in the deep perineal pouch, a superficial branch which supplies the structures in the superficial perineal pouch. The termination of this superficial perineal nerve is the posterior scrotal or the labial nerve. So to finish I'll just detail the nerve supply of the anterior scrotum and this is mostly from the ilioinguinal nerve.